You can think of the Senate as the state's house or the House of Review. This is where each state has equal representation and the ability to check on laws that the lower house, the House of Representatives, tries to pass. The Senate has 76 seats, 12 seats representing each state and two representing each territory. Half of the senators go up for re-election on a staggered basis each federal election because they sit in parliament for a term that is twice as long as that of the lower house members. As a result, there are six Senate seats per state up for grabs in a typical election. When you go to vote, you'll receive a huge white ballot paper. You have two options. You can number at least six boxes above the thick black line, or you can number at least 12 below that line. Above the line votes are for parties. When you vote for a party, you essentially give them your vote and let them decide who in the party it goes to. When you vote below the line, you specifically indicate which candidate you want your vote to go to. This is the best way of ensuring that you vote for who you really prefer. When counting up the votes for the Senate, any candidate doesn't actually need 50% of the vote to win. Because there are six Senate seats up for grabs in each state, candidates only need a far smaller percentage to get elected. This smaller percentage is called a quota. You can think of Senate quotas like buckets. As the number one votes for each party and candidate are counted, those votes begin to fill up the buckets. Whoever manages to fill up a bucket or a quota wins a Senate seat. This counting process continues until no single party or candidate has enough number one votes to fill a quota. This is where the order in which you numbered your boxes becomes important once again. Just like before, the party or candidate with the least number of number one votes is eliminated and their votes are distributed to whomever the voter numbered number two on their ballot paper. So just because the party or candidate that you preferenced number one has been eliminated doesn't mean that your vote has evaporated. It's still in play as long as the candidates or parties that you preferenced at any point on the ballot paper are still in the running for a seat. This is why, whether you vote above the line or below the line, it's hugely important that you number as many boxes as you possibly can. This makes it far more likely that a candidate that you prefer will be in the running for a Senate spot, and it will make it far less likely that your vote will be exhausted. This process of redistribution will continue until each Senate seat has been won by a candidate or a party. Authorised by Warwick Marsh, 1A227 Corder Road, Mount Kembla, New South Wales, 2526.